So, Jeremy, what have you been playing lately? You know one of the games I want to ask you about. Yeah, um, I, I haven't gotten to game night much lately because I've uh, got a newborn. She's six weeks old. Um, so sleep has been more important than games. So I've sure. been playing a lot of kids' games with my niece, but um, I finally got out Friday night to uh, my regular group, and I was bringing a bunch of little light games and stuff, and then uh, a friend of mine got Gloomhaven in, so everything else just kind of went to the side, and that's what we played. Yeah, so you guys are doing a regular campaign of it? Y'all going to try to do the same people on the, tri- on the, the trip through the, through the game? We've got a group of uh, five that normally meet, so the game plays four. And one of the guys has been just kind of running it, DMing it um, for the one session that we did. So we try to keep our, our normal group together. And he doesn't mind running the game. He has just as much fun doing that. So hopefully we'll be able to run through it that way. But it's going to be kind of a, a year-long thing, I think, next year because it's so long. So it'll take a while to get through. I know it's early, of course, but uh, what do you think so far? I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, there's – a lot in it um early the er, my early thoughts were that the battle system the the fighting is really cool um have you have you seen it at all no i've seen the box and that's it okay yeah the box we haven't seen, broken it out yet yeah the the battle system you have two you pick two cards each time and you get a hand of your cards and you get to choose two of them to play that round you have to choose two um And each one of them has a a, a top and a bottom. And you have to play the top from one and the bottom from another. So it gives you a little bit of options um, because you can, you don't have to declare what you're doing, but you do have to use those two cards. So, um, and then it's run by an initiative system. So there's a number on each one of the cards. The lowest number is, you know, first an initiative. So if I play a card that's a 10 and a 60, my 10 is my initiative, I go pretty much first in the round. Um, But you could have a situation where you've made these grand plans and then, oh, your buddy over here has a lower initiative and he does something that screws your whole thing up. So you have an additional option of doing the opposite of what you plan. Instead of doing the top of one card, the bottom of another, you can do the bottom and the top. It's it's interesting. Um, Gives you a little options. But basically, it's a dungeon crawl that you've got um, objectives that you're trying to complete. There's a story that goes along with it. And um, you're, as you build in the story, you get different options and the options are going to lead you different places. Sounds like a big world. It is. I mean, it's set, the the town is called Gloomhaven. um, And then you immediately are led out into a dungeon crawl. You, have random encounters like any RPG video game you might have ever played. Sure. Um, but when you, if you defeat a certain thing, like uh, not to give anything away, but the the very first thing we encountered was, had a treasure chest in the room. Of course, I'm playing the the ninja thief because that's what just what I'm going to do. Right. Um, and uh, all my buddies are like finishing up the battle, and I'm going straight for the treasure. And so I unload, unlock the treasure and it says, okay, see this chart in the back of the book, notebook and it's going to tell you what's in the treasure chest, whether it's an item or it could be another quest. It could be um, letters from somebody that leads you somewhere else. And based on that, you add in different things, either add in another weapon or something for you or you could add in another place you go. And I think there, we were looking at there's 75 scenarios just – that you can go through in the entire book. Wow. That, I mean, that's yeah. the detail that it, that, that went into making this game just boggles my mind. I mean, we really are in the golden age of gaming right now. Oh yeah. It's great. And in, in addition to the 75 scenarios, there's 20, I think there were 20 or 25 character classes. So you can start off with uh, your choice of five or six, I think. Um, but as you work through them and your characters level up and then you, you have a secret goal for each character. Once you complete that within the campaign, that character retires. He's like, Oh, I got what I need. I'm gone. And you choose a new character class, which will be higher up or different. Like immediately, of course, I want to play the bard so I can screw things up. Right. Um, (laughs) But the bard's not available till you've leveled up in the game longer. And um, as you, 
complete camp complete the scenarios you get experience points and you build your character up it's 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 kind of similar to have you played pathfinder the card game yep yep i'm still yep. working through rune of the rune of the rise of the rune lords but is that the first one yeah i still have uh, yeah, the first yeah. one yeah we're we're almost done with that one but this is similar to that in that the game is persistent you're going to have your um your characters that you put back in the card case and next time you just pull them out and you do it again. So it's like running a D and D campaign without um, having to really think too much. It does the thinking for you. One of the things I don't like about Pathfinder, uh, the adventure card game is the ungodly setup time. I mean, it just takes forever to get everything set up and then to break it back down. So I started it with my boys and it's just tough because a lot of times they just want to pop in for an hour or so to play a game. Heck, it takes 20 or 30 minutes just to get us back into the game, you know? Yeah. Is, is that the same in Gloomhaven? I've heard it's, that it's, it's a little a, easier. It's, it, it's a little easier, but it's still got a setup time. Um, one thing I did like, though, is that it seemed to be if you, if you lost, if you did certain things, there would be other consequences from what I could get. Um, maybe not saving a certain character or an NPC or something led you a di- different path. I haven't played it enough to tell, but um, it really had choices and stuff that were kind of neat. It's it's a legacy type game, so you're going to, I mean, immediately first thing that happened to us, we encounter a random encounter, and it says rip this card up when you're done. Wow! And we're like, okay, that's you know, of it's, course we we played Pandemic Legacy, so it's sure. Um, and when it was my game, I'm like, ha ha, rip. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, my friend Brad was like, no, I'm going to save this. I might want to play this one again. So I was, I was happy to rip the stuff up in, in a pandemic legacy, just like you. Hey, yeah. BJ from Board Game Gumbo here, back with episode number 20 of Gumbo Live. I've got Jeremy, the Game Geek Ninja. We're talking Gloomhaven. I did have one more question about Gloomhaven. Sure. You and me and Steve O'Rourke, we love to talk about filler games on the internet. We love to talk about uh, gateway games really more. You know, Family Weight, the SDJ games. Uh, the Spiel des Jahres weight games. It's Gloomhaven that, I mean, I, I know it's a big, big game and I don't mean right. it from that perspective, but are the mechanics relatively easy to get into? I don't think it's super hard. I mean, um, I, I certainly, it's not heavy at all. I mean, it might be on the lighter side of medium, I guess is what it, what I would put it at. But I think compared to Pathfinder, I think it's easier than Pathfinder because okay. Um, with Pathfinder, you get, I don't know. I found that a little harder to, uh, get some of the concepts behind it when I first started out playing it. Um, some of the, the ways that you use your weapon and you have to spin stuff and, uh, the, um, I forget what they're called now. The, uh, the blessings deck, the blessings, the blessings. That was the most confusing part for me was the blessings deck. Exactly what it was, you know? Yeah. And, it took me a while to figure out it's just a timer. Right, right, right. And if you match it up, you can get special powers or use it for a special thing. But, um, yeah, that there's no real timer on Gloomhaven except that um, you will run out of cards eventually because every time you run out of cards, it's got a system where you, you have to play the ones in your hand um, until you run out, and then you have to rest. Um, and when you rest, you lose a card basically. So you can run through your cards a number of times, but eventually you're going to run out. So that's the timer, but it's really easy to understand. It took us maybe 10 minutes to explain it. And there's already some good, uh, intro, how to play the game rules videos online. So it's, it's not bad. I think I could probably teach it to most people who've played games before. I don't know if that's the first thing I'd hit the table with, unless somebody just looked at it and went, Ooh, what is this? And then, yeah. But uh, you could easily step up from one of the gateway games and, and get into it not too long afterwards. Maybe a next level game then. Maybe not yeah. a gateway, but maybe more of a next level game. 